Manju has been trained to investigate things. However, he was never trained to wear a muzzle, so this is a green dog. The first step is to desensitize Mandu to the muzzle. So interacting with it, looking at it, approaching it, all these will get him his rewards. Notice that we're not using lures to train the behavior. The food is on the ground in a container. Mandu is totally aware of that. And he's working regardless of the fact that there is food on the floor or uh, your hands because luring, we don't need to do that. Just stop doing it. Just stop. Just let dogs think. That's all I'm asking. Finally, I'm going to leave the sound in the background uh, high enough so that you can hear click. For the professional trainers out there, Henry's going to restart his session right about here. And until he clicks, you can also click. So the window of opportunity for click here is pretty long. And so if you need a higher rate of reinforcement, click way before Henry does. Our dogs and trainers learn to work under stress, and this is true for Manju as well. So when he was a puppy being trained for the animal assisted therapy program, he learned to cope with stress because that's the requirement of his job. So we ask of him multiple behaviors in a row so that we can get, you know, higher probability of proper behavior for our successive approximation. For the non-professional dog trainers, we're trying to teach Mandu that if he tries hard, he gets paid hard. So he's trying to push it, which he was trained for. And then, whoops, that was Harriet barking. And so if we can get even just the tip of his nose or his chin into the muzzle, then we will reinforce that. So Henry tries a few times and do refuses, which he's totally allowed to do. We always do the rule of three. So we ask three times trying for Mandu to put his nose in the muzzle. And when Henry counts, on the fourth trial, then he will reinforce that behavior. So this behavior will be reinforced. So we try three times. If no success, we reinforce the number four behavior. The only time we wouldn't reinforce is if Mandu offered a completely different behavior. So this is a normal process. We try for three behaviors. If he doesn't get it on the fourth, we reinforce. But most of the time on behavior two or three, they're going to offer the right behavior. So it goes pretty fast. We're trying to set the increments of our successive approximations according to the type of behaviors that he's willing to offer. And this way we can train a lot faster than a lure trainer. So in the background, Harriet is complaining. She also wants to work. Um, but today we're focusing on Mandu and Henry is your trainer. So let's fast forward to step number two and listen to some cool music along the way.
When I noticed Mandu's tail, I immediately uh, moved Harriet further behind us so that he would be more comfortable in his workspace. So here I'm noticing Mandu's tail is all the way down. And I'm like, oh, okay, strange. So I just moved Harry out of the way and then his tail is back and happy camper. In social cognitive learning theory, we always have to be sure that the environment in which the dog is learning is predisposed to learning. So if something's off, then the behavior of the dog becomes off. That said, they don't have to work in stress-free environments. Yeah. That's just unrealistic. I mean, Life is realize. stressful. So we add stress to their lives and allow them to work and they prevail every single time. So this means we're doing things right. In step number two, we actually have two criteria. The first one is to put your nose in the muzzle, hopefully um, as far back as possible, but also time, how you can keep it on you without having to fight it off. So we tend to focus a little bit more on time uh, than actual precision in this case because we want the dog to be able to stay in the muzzle while we wrap those parts around his head to clip them in place. Now Henry's going to give me some feedback on Mandu's behavior and he's trying to say that Mandu is a really smart dog but right now he's having a little bit of a conflict with Harriet because he wants to work and be in his space but so too does Harriet. So even though she's further away, that conflict still exists. It's just not escalating into anything. In step three, we're going to start wrapping the bands of the muzzle around the dog's cheek, neck, and eventually clipping it all the way. But at the moment, Henry's just working on putting that muzzle on and then putting the band next to his head. You can see how Henry is quiet when he works because he's super concentrated and that's absolutely normal. Hence why I'm doing this voiceover, because we tend to forget to speak when we're concentrating. Now let's fast forward to the next step with a little bit of music. muzzle was too small for Mandu so when Henry tried to tie it around Mandu's head he didn't like it and this is why he's refusing to put it on again. So one little thing even after 11 trials can set you back um, a lot so be careful what you're doing. We finished the training session knowing that the muzzle wasn't appropriate for Mandu but we're going to do a part two and finish this behavior with a different muzzle that actually fits Mandu so that you can see it properly. It's important to finish the training session on a positive note so here Henry pretends to clip the muzzle by holding it, reinforces Mandu and will give him some treats. Then I instruct Henry that it's time to end the session because of what I just observed and he'll give the end of training signal, finished and we're done with that for now. I cut the nylon band just to see if we were able to tie the muzzle on Mandu uh, even if it wasn't safe and secure just for training purposes. It worked so I decided let's go ahead and do session number two and see what happens. Boy. So did I click at the right time when I'm done like removing everything? You, or? you can click while he's holding because your click will tell him the muzzle also comes off which is a reward. When I'm holding what? So when you're when it's tied up and you're holding the muzzle, you can click, then unclip it because okay. the unclipping and removing is a reward. Okay. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, you want it? Yeah. It's normal for dogs to want to remove the muzzle, so we're just going to allow Mandu to work through this by gently holding his head and rewarding when he's not actively pawing at it, rubbing, or trying to move uh, the muzzle off. With Mandu's short legs, it's a bit tricky to try to prevent him from stopping that because his leg is right at our hand 
uh, distance. But Henry works through it and Manju will eventually get it. So let's watch the rest of the session in Fast Forward. Oh boy. I tell Henry to wrap up the session and finish on a success. It's important to set the dogs up uh, to succeed. If not, they get discouraged. So he asks Manju for a hand touch while he's with the muzzle. We'll reward him and then good dog, good boy, give him a little bit of a jackpot. And once the dog looks at you, you can give the finished signal. Hopefully this was a good video for you and gives you the steps on how to train a dog to wear a muzzle. If you want to see more videos from Harry, just let me know in the comments below and we will do our best to show you a little bit more of that. In the meantime, this is me signing off and saying ciao for now. Bye doggos.